this is the lecture number 4 and in the previous lecture we were talking about you know the similarity between humans and geomaterials. So, in this context I will continue with my discussion this is just to give you an idea about. So, to continue with the discussion which you are having if you consider the symptoms which are common to human beings and the soils I am listing the symptoms first and then we will quiz about what these symptoms correspond to in case of soils. So, the first one is obesity, the second one is anoxia, high blood pressure, then followed by giddiness, then followed by epilepsy and fractures fatigue and last but not the least is urinary problems. So, this is how our body behaves you know when we are not ok. So, these are the symptoms which our body shows. Now, the whole idea of uh, corresponding these symptoms to the systems like soils is what could be the reason why are we are studying these type of symptoms and what we are going to use these symptoms to our professional activities. To cure the problems. Very nice. So, to if you understand the disorders, we can cure them. So, what is the role of geotechnical engineers? To find solutions to the problems. problems. Very good. Any other input? So, most of the time, what we do as a technologist, we are trying to sort out the issues which are related to soils. So, any guess what this obesity would correspond to? Swelling. Yes, you are right. So, basically these are expensive soils. Swelling, that is right. Anoxia. So, I will quickly go through so that the tempo remains maintained. It is basically opposite of the swelling, shrinkage. Anoxia means you feel dull, you feel down, you may collapse anytime. How about the high blood pressure? Very good. So, it is poor water pressure, excess poor water pressure and what about the giddiness? Is this ok? Instability, you talk about instability of what type? Structural deformation, collapse potential of the soils. You must have used this term to define sands. The way we define granular material, the first of the engineering characteristic which is very important would be what is the collapse potential? How do you define collapse potential? Sharan? About shear strength and failure in block about that. No, no, no. Collapse potential of granular material, it has something to do with the instability, yes. Sir, there are problematic soils for collapses in soils. Uh, How do you define collapse potential? of granular materials. So, suppose uh, there is a granular material, it may collapse if there is how do you how would you quantify collapse? Deformation. Now, how would you define engineering characteristics of the granular material? Engineering, not classification only, collapse potential, yes. Pankaj, Pankaj, yes please. In terms of factor of safety? No. What will be the voluminous change when it is saturated? Very good. With respect you are not 100% to... correct. Instability associated to what? No. <laughs> Settlement, do we talk in granular materials? Yes. Anybody on this side? It has nothing to do with the shear resistance. Be assured. Yes. Yeah. I said she is very close to the correct answer. You can pick up from there. Yes. Very good. So, can you please now redefine what is collapse potential? Use your mic. Collapse 
when it comes in contact with water, sudden change in volume, like yes, void so, ratio change. You are also 80 percent close to the like strain, uh, volumetric strain. Mm, uh, plastic limit to liquid limit. In granular material, oh. we don't talk about plastic limit, liquid limit. You are violating your statement. Yes. Instability. What is giddiness? You are standing and suddenly you fall down. Yes, which phenomena of this type normally? Sorry? No. Yeah, so you are close, but yeah, let them try now. So suppose if I start my test, what I do is I will take granular material in a odometer ring and I will do a simple consolidation test. That means in a odometer ring after filling the dry sand, I will apply loads. What will happen? Suppose if I start from E naught, what will happen? The moment you apply load, it is going to deform, this is what is known as collapse. Now this collapse is normally studied under inundation, this is what you are talking about two of you when it comes in contact with water, so this is the inundation. Inundation means suppose there is a heap of granular material which I have created, it could be mining residue, it could be the tailings from the mines. It could be fly ash, it could be you are doing dredging in the sea and then you are taking out all the sands and then you are piling it up, fine, even landfill also. Now what happens suddenly is there is a rainfall, now what will happen because of the rainfall? The stability of this structure which has been created by piling up the granular material which is coming from these sources is going to be a big question mark. Why? Look at the two things which I have created a similitude between. We know the stresses which are acting at the base or at any given point in the heap. Now this is the stress which I have correspond which I am corresponding to this state. Now at this state, the moment rainfall occurs is an inundation that means the entire system becomes wet. Under the sustained loading, what is going to happen? Truly speaking, this point should have been exactly on this line. This is not correct. Fine. So, this much of the volumetric deformation, if I say EF, the collapse potential Cp is defined as delta E over 1 plus E naught, where delta E is E naught minus EF. Those of you who might get a chance to work on sands, particularly if you are happening to be a professional in the Middle East or in the areas of the world where you have to deal with mostly sands as the natural system. We do not talk about settlements there, we do not talk about deformations there, we only talk about collapse potential. So, collapse potential defines the instability, look at what has happened, at this sustained stress, the moment system comes in contact with water, it collapses, this is the instability which is getting caused in the system. Now, when I am using this material as a geotechnical material, I should be knowing how much system will collapse. Another interesting thing you will notice is, if you keep on increasing the stress of the loading, what will happen? The collapse will decrease, you know. If I increase from sigma 1 to sigma 2, the confining stress, the potential of the material to collapse is decreasing. So, do you get some interesting idea from here, which can be used in the practice for mine tailings, coal heaps, fly ash heaps, slags, go to any industry, you will find several of these heaps existing there, is it not? Those of you who are coming from Korba region, you know, very close to Raipur, Bilaspur, these areas, 
you must be seeing there are big big mountains of the coal residues which have been deposited. So, any for that matter you go to any industrial unit you will find the waste has been deposited exposed to the atmosphere when rainfall comes the biggest question is the whole system will collapse and after it collapse what will happen? It is going to be dangerous to everybody near populace those who are living in the nearby area. It may stop even the operations in the mines clear. So, this is the concept which normally we utilize in defining the instability. So, the next point would be epilepsy. What is epilepsy? This is liquefaction. Losing the sense of what is happening and hence the particles start boiling because of loss of shear stress. You know this is what epilepsy is. That means, losing the sense of the physics of the matter. So, this is what actually we study quite a lot in uh, geomechanics. What about the fractures? Uh, sir, just now you were talking about uh, if we increase the stress level then collapse potential decreases. So, where uh, is the application in the real thing you didn't say about that. So, how can you increase the pressures which are coming at the base? There is a fundamental question. Tell me what will be the answer. So, suppose if I want to increase from sigma 1 to sigma 2 what I should be doing to these slopes? Compact very good. How much amount of energy time efforts are required to compact these loosely created hillocks? Extremely difficult. So, this is a very big challenge which most of the industries are facing. This was all uncontrolled dumping and now the consequences have to be faced by us because densification of these systems is not so easy. It is very expensive and time consuming and hazardous. All these dumps were created by loosely packing the material. Now, how would you access them? But yes, this is the need of the hour. So, if you go to most of the industrial plants where these type of heaps are available, they all want to stabilize them. Now, this is the engineering related to geotechnical aspects of the material where compaction densification of the heaps is to be done. Imagine the whole geomechanics changes now. We call them as rehabilitation of heaps. Check it on net, you will get lot of papers on rehabilitation of industrial byproducts heaps. See, this is where the money is, this is where the consulting is, this is where the practice is of geotechnical engineering concepts, fine. So, failures and collapse, I think you are aware of in foundation engineering, retaining structures, you have done a lot. Any idea about the fatigue, cyclic loading, you know, you are well averse of this. Urinary problems, seepage, anything which related to seepage, drainage creates this type of issue. So, what is the context of talking about this? As I said some time back, you know, more or less medical science has already mastered human body except for few parts of it. But where we are as geotechnical engineers is a big question. I was just talking about a simple problem and then he was counter discussing few concepts. Now, the issue is this type of simple problems have not been mastered yet by geotechnical engineers. So, but where we are heading to the whole idea is if I know what is the reference, what other professionals are doing, how they have mastered the systems, let it be human body, I can master my geo systems. So, this is where there is lot of match between the two professions. We deal with the profession, we deal with the challenges and several concerns. One of the concerns I told you is stabilize these heaps. Second concern could be there are landfills, so stabilize them. Suppose if I reverse the problem and if I say that there is a landfill and I want to rehabilitate the entire landfill. In a city like Bombay where the cost of the land is so much, can we afford a landfills of few hundreds of hectares in the middle of the city? I think this we discussed in some other lecture that nowadays landfills have become part of the city. There was a time when landfills were away from the cities, clear. So, all these landfills are now following the 
municipal corporation rules. So, suppose if I ask you that I want to rehabilitate the entire area, what should I be doing? This becomes engineering related to rehabilitation of landfills. This is also a very new subject which is picking up very fast. So, imagine if I can give you back the land which was utilized for landfilling for construction purpose, how would you do it? So, there could be a situation like uh, you know there could be a mound and we will discuss about this how this is done, how this can be done, what are the possibilities and so on. This is okay. So, this is again a solution to a problem, challenge, right, concern. So, what happens is most of the time geotechnical engineers are also involved with Number one, diagnostics. You have to diagnose a problem. Is this correct? So, this is where the medical professionals also do the same thing. Go to any hospital, any polyclinic, what do they do? First thing is you are supposed to get all diagnostics done, all the tests. So, this is what is known as symptoms and abnormalities identification. So, you are talking about two cases here, one is above the ground level, another one is below the ground level, what are the symptoms of two structures, what are the abnormalities they are creating. In a landfill if I keep on piling up, the whole thing might be falling in the landing path of the aircrafts. Now, this is a situation which Bombay is facing. Unfortunately, it so happened that our alignment of the airstrip and the is perfectly matching with the they have not dumping yard. So, there are symptoms, there are abnormalities, diagnosis has been done. You understand this? Is this clear? What are the problems if uh, flying path is passing over the landfills? Number one is birds, number two, sorry. What are the problems? you will face, why there is a concern? Waste coming on running. Waste will not come in the picture. Birds is one, yes, that is a very big havoc, smoke, fire. So, whenever you have a landfill and which is lying in the landing path, a smoke and fire then comes visibility. Most of the time these landfills catch fire and what will happen then? You know this very very hazardous situation. So, these are the symptoms which somebody is telling you. Now, when they appoint you as a consultant, they tell you these problems. Look, these are the problems. Now, what we want? We want a prescription from you. This is what doctors do, no? Once the diagnostics are done, and nowadays they will get everything on their terminal, your blood report, serum report, urine report, stool report, everything. And then consultants will come and they will tell you these are the issues. So, this is how we describe or sorry, we prescribe prescriptions. What are prescriptions? Measures which should be taken to correct the problem. So, ground improvement, ground modification is a very good example of a prescription. Then later on it becomes technique once you start following it. Are you getting the point? So, first thing is you have to diagnose decontamination of soils. The soils which are heavily contaminated with chemicals, hydrocarbons, tomorrow I want to utilize them for infrastructure development. Let us say for farming agriculture. I want to create underground shelters over there. So, what I have to do? I have to do adequate corrections, remedial measures and then what happens in medical profession? They will say okay, you start taking these medicines, see me after 3 days, follow up, come after 7 days or the patient comes out of ICU, they keep him or her in the general ward for few weeks, few days few hours, why? Observations, monitoring. So, the third thing which is very, very useful in our profession and which matches with the medical profession is we also do prolonged monitoring. Any example of monitoring? Spore pressure. Very good. So, one is you like to monitor pore pressures and, settlement. and settlements and intake and yes, you are right. Lateral movement. So, we were discussing about this case, let us say you wanted to compact this whole thing 
and somewhere here we have right of way property line. So if I do not do anything just leave it to the fate of its own what is going to happen the entire thing may collapse and it may result in a disaster. These type of failures are happening in today's world particularly last year in China there was a major failure where the red mud pond failed August 2016 or 2015 I think. So there was a major disaster ok. So most of these industrial waste which are being stacked have a potential hazardicity associated with them. What should I be doing? Suppose if I compact them we were discussing about that. I would like to see what type of stresses are going to come over here. I can put some devices so that I can measure these stresses, stress sensors let us say. I would like to see how much deformation is taking place. I can take RLs, I can put consolidometer plates, I can put consolidation plates, settlement plates, settlement gauges. Apart from this, if this is a saturated system, I would like to study what is the pore pressure which is generating inside because all of you know that stability of the slope is a function of pore pressure. What else I would like to measure? I would like to measure what is the lateral deformation. So suppose there is a railway track which is passing by, you know this is a railway track let us say. So are you going to allow this type of a treatment which is going to be given to the hillock or a heap because you should be sure that nothing is going to spill over up to the railway track. That means I want to see inclination of the slopes during construction. I will be installing lot of inclinometers you must have heard about to see the inclination of the slopes. I would like to see how much the slope is deflecting in the lateral direction deflectometers. So this is what is nowadays being done to monitor the projects. So we measure border pressure settlements, we monitor the stresses which are coming inside, we monitor the deflection of the lateral directions. We talk about the inclination of the planes on which we are more interested. Landslides monitoring is all about this. But unfortunately, this type of monitoring is not complete. We are nowhere taking into account what is happening inside the system. Because later on, you will realize inside these systems, a lot of physical, chemical, bacteriological, biological, chemical, thermal activities are going to happen. So we are not monitoring that right now which we would like to monitor. So present day geomechanics under the realm of environmental geomechanics deals with all these type of monitorings. Yeah. So we are using sensors quite a lot to monitor each and every phenomenon. What type of gases are coming out of the landfills? What type of leachers are coming out of the landfills? In my words, these are nothing but the excreta of the landfill. So what medical professionals do? They keep on testing your excreta, urine stool, clear? So what we do? We go to the landfills, we collect the landfill gases, we analyze them, we collect the leachates, we analyze them. So the profession has a lot of similarity. So that means you have diagnosis, you have prescription, then you have prolonged monitoring and this is what the whole profession is all about, fine. So we were discussing about soil mechanics if you remember in the previous lecture. And we until now define soil by giving different definitions and then correlating soil with the human body and the symptoms and what not. Now the turn is of mechanics. What is mechanics? How do you define mechanics? Yes, please. Arvind. Physical expressions to model something like you model any material like soil in soil mechanics, soil. Uh, we will model soil will not come in the picture, soil is sitting there. I can change that to fluid, I can change that to solid, I can change that to composites, clear? Yeah. So we are talking about only mechanics part right now. So mechanics is a use of physical and natural laws to modify anything or to use that in to solve. Can you modify the definition which is giving? Yes. You are also Arvind. Oh, you are Arvind then? Deepak, yes please. How do you define mechanics? Using the physics of beds to solve fluid particles, soil particles, solid particles, 
by using the mathematical expressions. Biji, what is the Bijan? Bibin, yes, Bibin. The application of an external force and its response. Study. Arvind. Yes. Uh, uh, to solve the uh, real life problems on uh, with the help of uh, mathematical expressions and physics uh, physics law. Varthi. Yes, please. Good, you are quite close. Yeah. To study the behavior and response of the structure and then external loading or external. Uh, Very good, okay. She is quite close, yes. Sorry, mechanics, we study the. What is mechanics? It's a, it's a part of. Uh, it's not, it cannot be a part of anything. Mechanics is something different, yes. Did you ever question this to what is mechanics? Why we are studying soil mechanics? Nirja? It's a very interesting question, no? Why we are studying soil mechanics? Why we are studying geomechanics? How a system responds to external systems. Very good. So yeah, you, you people are quite close to it. This is say simple in my opinion. First of all, in mechanics, material is very important that we keep as a black body. It could be municipal solid waste, clear? It could be gas hydrates, it could be sediments which are coming out of the ocean bed, estuaries, clear? It could be rock samples, it could be soil samples, it could be fly ash, man-made resource, man-made geomaterials, different type of industrial byproducts which are being stacked like this, what we were discussing. So, any material and some of you are correct, how it is going to behave under a given circumstances. You are talking about force, that is right, you are talking about stress or something that is also okay. She was very close to all these things, all of you. So, the whole idea is I am trying to understand the properties of the material number one, number two, how this material is going to behave under given circumstances. This is very important when you study environmental geomechanics because of the environmental effects a lot of circumstances are going to change. Whatever circumstances we are talking about, you enter a coal mine, ambience is different, clear? You cannot even stand there for 3 minutes, 5 minutes, why? There are fumes, there is sludge, there is odor, there is methane gas, there is a confinement, there is a sense of what do you call it? Claustrophobia. Now you are entering a narrow space. Now, how your body is going to perform? Your BP may shoot up. Some people may become nervous. Some people may collapse. This is what happens normally. So, they do not allow everybody to enter in the mines normally. They have to, they have to get checked up first whether you are normal or not. So, this is a human body how it is behaving under different environmental conditions. Close to furnace, if I ask you to walk, Go to industrial units where boiler units are there. Again, the environmental condition has changed. Now, look at the foundations which are provided for the boiler units, the furnaces, the forges. I hope you understand forges and all. These are forging machines which are making sheet metal out of it. Clear? What type of foundations we are going to provide there? Where the temperature is getting seeped into the foundations creating a different environmental condition, creating a different circumstances, fine. Most of the piers of the bridges which are sitting on the ocean bed or the river bed and fully knowing the fact that most of our rivers and ocean beds are, ocean waters are contaminated. See, I have created a situation which is man-made. How concrete is going to behave which was designed for 50 years under this type of corrosion, under this type of corrosive environment. Are you getting the point? So, I want to understand how a system, a material behaves under given circumstances. And then remember, 
mechanics is nothing but patterns. You say F equal to m into a, mass is fixed, you apply force acceleration clear, it is a pattern. In case of your bearing capacity problems, what do you do? If you remember, you draw the semi infinite soil mass and then there is a foundation which is being loaded from the top Then what gets generated? Line of shear planes or shear failures, what are these shear failures? These are patterns. Then very conveniently you have defined three types of shear failures, why? Based on their shape patterns, then you said local, general and punching, clear? Now what did I do? I changed the dimension of the foundation rather than putting it on the surface, I have created a situation where it becomes a pile, you know, the length of the foundation becomes much more than the diameter. And if I ask you to draw the shear bands now or the shear line of forces, how would you do it? You see the circumstances have changed. So, mechanics is something very interesting where you study only the patterns, agreed? So, this is what actually we will do. We will try to see what type of pattern a system exhibits. So, if I know the force, if I know the mass, I can compute acceleration. You increase the force, acceleration gets increased. So, there is a pattern which is getting followed. In bearing capacity problem also, what happens? A general shear failure can be converted into a local shear failure just by playing with the external forces which are going to come. And if I keep on increasing the pressure which is acting on the foundation, what will happen? From a general to local and from a local it will become a punching failure. The entire thing will punch into the soil mass or the rock mass. It is very interesting. So, this is what actually we try to study when we study soil mechanics, how soils are behaving under external loading conditions and what is being exhibited is strains. If collapse does not occur, that is the bottom line. So, coming back to the issue now, we have now dissected soil mechanics. We have understood what soils are, we have defined this as a material and we have understood what mechanics is. So, in short, when we studied soil mechanics, it is nothing but the mechanics which is applied to the soils as a material to understand how they are going to behave under different environmental conditions and that is what is the environmental effect on our subject which we have been studying until now without taking into account the effect of environment on soils and rocks. Clear? So, once you start thinking like this, what will happen? This is the genesis of environmental geomechanics. So, anything, any pattern which is coming out of the environmental forces, not the mechanical forces, because Tazagian geomechanics talks about mechanical stresses, they do not talk about thermal stresses, they do not talk about chemical stresses, they do not talk about psychological stresses they do not talk about societal pressures, clear? And all these type of activities which have to be included in today's context. So, in short, this is the genesis of environmental geomechanics. In simple words, we are trying to study the response of the material under different environmental conditions and we are very eager to see how it is going to behave. Is this part clear? This finishes the introduction of the subject. Any question? Have you understood that how it is derived and why we are saying that what is the genesis of the environmental geomechanics? So, I would like to study the influence of environmental parameters on geomaterials and what is the mechanics associated with this. Any questions? So, moving on to the next part, if somebody asks you a question, what is the genesis of the subject? Why this subject originated? So, things are simple now. I think we can always say it is a population explosion which is forcing us to think differently. I gave you an example some time back. Population has increased, 
as a civil engineer what is my prime job to give accommodation shelter to everybody is it not i cannot deny the fact that all these people who are coming to a city require a shelter they require infrastructure and now what's happening this infrastructure is mostly in the regions which were not fit for habitation you see we give the, i gave you this example city lines are increasing day by day countries are expanding day by day go to countries like japan they have most of their airports in the sea korea singapore why they don't have land so all of them have satellite airports so what they have done is a sort of a annexation annex of the country so they created an annex of the country the way we have civil engineering annex you know main department and the labs are in the annex building so population explosion is one of the reasons of why people are migrating towards environmental geomechanics you have to accommodate masses people too much of industrialization so too much of industrialization has its own consequences and in our realm in our domain what type of influence industrialization would be having either in the gaseous phase more and more industries more and more emitting of the gases or more and more liquids sludges waste water or solids by products so when you are doing mining operation how much gallons of water you utilize to cut the coal for that matter even if you do a simple piling operation what do you do you use water to clean the bore log bore holes so that the piles can be fitted inside and this water if it comes in contact with the contaminants is going to be contaminated you can't let it just flow anywhere gases of course any industrial process will be emitting lot of gases fortunately we say that gases are not in our domain and environmental scientists will take care of but unfortunately environmental scientists say that we cannot take care of other two parts the solid parts and the of course they say that waste water they are handling but most of the waste water contains suspended solids so this becomes a very interesting multi phase system so industrialization is responsible for all sorts of issues which environmental geotechnologists can deal with are you happy with this so in other words what we have done we have created a new domain of our activities which is now superseding the activities of environmental scientists this will be clear after some time there is another issue which comes to my mind that uh, is basically don't bother approach which is creating all sorts of mess in the contemporary society very sluggish and don't bother approach you go anywhere in the world you carry lot of waste along with you you enjoy the whole day picnic and at the end of the day you will dump everything in the park clear mount everest is a good example so many expeditions go every year and what these guys do they carry along with them their livelihood gadgets and when they are coming down all of them dump it there itself so there was a article in newspaper some time back where is the highest possible landfill located in the world this is the mount everest clear so whatever has been discarded is located at that height how many feet how much imagine this is the highest place where the people never bothered about what they are throwing when they are coming down after the expedition is over so this is a typical don't bother approach in today's world you know there have so many applications of this don't bother approach i am extracting all the resources from the nature exploiting it i don't bother drilling of the crude oil is going on 
10 percent, 15 percent, 20 percent of the oil is wastage, it is flowing down in the drains and these drains are connected to the landfills or they might be connected to the agricultural fields or they might be connected to the drinking water supply lines, clear? Now you cannot say that I do not want oil and I will not drill oil. So the more and more expectation, the more and more society is growing, the more and more approach towards environment, nature is becoming sluggish. Then we have to take care of this ignorance, many people are not aware of all this, you know what is going to happen, how these activities are going to get reflected in the environment itself, they have not been educated. So, it is not their problem, it is our problem, we are not educating the masses properly. Next is human greed, which is directly related to our profession. I can create war between two countries, why? Is the greed, why should I invade you? I want to, you know, capture the entire land, I want to capture all the resources and I want to exploit them. So, the psychology of the wars is nothing but greed. In our own country what we are doing? Is there any permissible limit for mining? Even after you achieve 300 meter depth, next day your manager will ask you can you go 320 meter deep? You achieve 320 meter, then the next question would be can we go 350 meter deep? So, there is no line which is stopping you, clear? So, the more and more inundation you are doing, the more and more drilling you are doing, it falls under greed. And suppose if it is water, hydrocarbons, liquid phase, gases which you are extracting from hydrocarbon reservoirs, what is going to happen? Subsidence. So, the more and more you extract, the more and more ground settles, all right. He was talking about that Venice will rise again, it is a beautiful book with one example. The more and more water you intake, the entire city is settling down. So, the water level has gone up in the sea and the city has come down. Imagine what type of situation you have created. So, what these guys are doing now? How to restore this type of situation? Yes, so there is a UNESCO sponsored project. So, what they are doing is they have drilled hundreds of boreholes in the city and then they are pumping water inside these so that the entire thing gets lifted up. What a beautiful example of jacking up of the city. Where do you jack up things when your car gets punctured, you jack up the entire car so that you can do retrofitting, clear? It is a beautiful example of how aquifers can be retrofitted. Look at where the science is right now, where the technology is heading to, what geotechnologists are doing these days. It is a beautiful example. Suppose if I want to rehabilitate mines, we have answer for that. So, whatever we have excavated out, Either we can backfill or we can create some material which will be compensating for the ores and the precious metals which have been taken out. So, this is where people are working. So, human greed is something which is responsible for creation of our expertise. Fortunately, if it was not there, what would have happened? We would have been jobless. So, the more and more human greed, the more and more challenging problems, the more and more application and the more and more situations you are creating for yourself to study new, new problems. These are good indications of you know where we are heading. So, basically as I said in the first lecture, this whole concept is a philosophy which is dealing with underground environment to cut short our domain. Truly speaking, the surface environment is also coming in the realm of environmental geomechanics. Many of the guys who have started working on plant, soil, ground water interaction. I am sure you will realize that this is the job which agricultural scientists cannot do because what we have done, we have created a new domain which is containing of roots of the plants and roots of the plants are embedded in the soil, it is a system and this system could be saturated. 
or unsaturated. So we have created a new domain of activity in underground environment itself which is not very far deep but it is very close to the surface and then environment is directly interacted with the entire situation. So underground environment itself is under question mark because the realm and domain of the activities of environmental geomechanist is increasing tremendously. So in short it is a combination and blend of environmental engineering and geotechnical engineering. So I think now all of you must have realized what is the importance of this subject, why people are working in this area these days and uh, they are creating more and more, uh, they, are, they are thinking, they are visualizing more and more situations where their expertise would be required in today's world. So let me come back to the a sort of a what is in store when we study environmental geomechanics. We talk about quality of water, land resources, how to transport them. I was given an example, you know, you are transporting the waste from one place to another place. There are a lot of issues associated with it apart from transportation. Can I use these resources which could be natural or man-made? How to dispose them? You know, if they are hazardous in nature, if they are toxic in nature, how to deal with them? How I am going to treat water and waste water? Until some time back it was the activity, core activity of environmental scientists. But now geotechnical engineering is also heading towards in this domain. I do not know whether you have come across this concept of permeable reactive barriers, PRBs, just check it on net, PRB, permeable reactive barriers. These are nothing but the porous media which are inserted into the ground to treat water. And there is a lot of geomechanics which is involved because we are dealing with porous media. How to reuse the water? Okay. Our realm of activities is also we would like to analyze and design foundation system, seepage control, earth dams, water resource structures, response of foundations and embankments to environmental activities. Now when you say environmental activities, there are two types of activities which are very, very important. One is the man-made environment, another one is uh, natural environment. Natural environment we were discussing the other day when we were talking about, you know, different type of geohazards and you people created a big list of the geohazards. We have never bothered about the man-made environment in which the systems are going to perform. And mostly this is because of the industrialization and population explosion. I have given you examples for both. Too much of industrialization, we have the effects and population, we have the effect and cause in place. So the question is, what type of scenario we are going to deal with? I think you should concentrate on this figure for some time because this is the gist of the entire thing, what is happening in today's world and what environmental geotechnologies are trying to do. So what I have shown here is, you might not have seen the animation, I will take you back so that you can realize the animation. This is what is known as dumping process. Now this could be a direct dumping, it could be indirect dumping. A red color indicates something which is critical, all right hazardicity. So I am dumping something which has hazardicity associated with it into the natural environment. Then there is a well and there is a village. What these people are doing? They are withdrawing water to drink and survive. In the process what happens? I have this first layer of the soil mass which is getting created which is partially saturated, it is not below the water table. The second layer which I have created is saturated below the water table and I have shown few arrows. These arrows basically indicate the flow of water table. 
the water table could be stagnant stationary or it could be flowing water you cannot stop it it depends upon the natural processes if lot of precipitation takes place somewhere the ground water will start flowing or if the slowing sloping ground there will be a movement of the water table or if somebody is drilling water some somewhere there will be a flow of water and so on. So, let us analyze this situation it was a serene environment beautiful nature's gift and then what we have done we have started manipulating the whole situation we are dumping the waste into the environment and this waste it passes through the first layer goes into the second layer and this is what I have shown as an aquifer. Most of the time aquifers are fractured because fractures give more porosity to the aquifer. When more porosity you have in a system the storage capacity of the aquifer will be more. If the aquifers are intact their porosities will be less and the storage of water will be extremely less clear. So, nature has done like this that it has given intact aquifers, it has given fractured aquifers and so on. Ultimately what happens is this waste or the toxicity or the hazardicity which we are dumping here becomes a part of the aquifer itself. So, this is where the contamination starts. You are trying to take out this water to drink which has become contaminated. The same process is taking place because of sea water which is intruding into the aquifers. In the coastal belt of India and anywhere in the world you go, what is the biggest problem? You do not have drinking water, why? Because even if you drill a borehole and you try to take out water, it will be brackish, you cannot drink it. Why? The sea water has displaced the fresh water. Why? See, now I am talking about the mechanics. You must have noticed, I gave you a situation and then I asked you a question why? Answer was sea water has displaced the fresh water. I said why? Very good. So, some of you are right because the density of the sea water is higher than the fresh water. So, what is going to do because of tidal activity sea water will flush out the fresh water clear. So, today's your resource is going to get migrated to some other country. I always give this logic all hydrocarbons which are lying in your territory today may not remain with you tomorrow continental drift is responsible for this. So, you cannot take it for granted ever that you know or it you may be so lucky if you are neighboring UAE. So, whatever petroleum is there it may get migrated towards your land and tomorrow you may become rich person. <laughs> so, this type of migration of the fluids may take place through porous media. So, the point is when we are dealing with these type of situations there are a lot of why, when, where, what's are coming as question marks you are getting the point. And then it becomes imperative, it becomes important to answer these type of questions. Now, suppose if I am taking out water for drinking purpose and this type of situation prevails, what is going to happen overall situation? Sometimes villagers complain that their water is having contaminants. This is the situation which is causing contamination of water in the drinking water, water supply, clear. So, we have to be careful. Another thing which you must have noticed is there is a lot of interaction taking place. So, one is the factual situation which you are talking about. The second situation is there is a lot of interaction which is occurring. All the waste material is interacting with soil mass which is partially saturated or dry one situation. The second situation is all this waste is interacting with the soil mass which is saturated. I have changed the context, you agree? All these contaminants are migrating with the rock mass, third situation. The first fourth situation could be rock mass which is intact and rock mass which is fractured. 
So, we want to understand how this interaction is going to take place. Is this okay? We want to quantify this whole phenomenon. Why? Any idea why we want to quantify this? Sharan? For understanding the unifying features of the thing intact or not, those things you have to be clear. Yeah. If we can control them, we can give a Very solution. Very good. Then only we can give a solution. I will change the context of the entire thing now. Suppose I am constructing a industry, all right. As an industrialist, I want to construct an industry. I want to stop, set up an industry. So, this is where the industry would be, all right. Any industry would create byproducts. The question is, where should I dump them? So, even if my factory premises are somewhere here, I will be dumping them over here stacking them and we were discussing sometime back that rainfall will take place and water will come through this and you know it is going to be physically detrimental to these type of stacks. But if you think a bit more, all this is porous media. So, because of the rainfall, rain water will interact with the matrix of the waste which is being dumped and ultimately the things will leach out. This is what is known as leaching. In your environmental engineering courses, you must have studied. And then slowly and slowly this will start migrating into the subsurface. Look at this situation, whatever the particulates are going in the air, in the gaseous phase, during rains they will also precipitate down and the same situation will get created. Third situation could be, I do not want to occupy my own premises in dumping the waste, particularly when you are dealing with atomic waste let us say. Why? Because a lot of scientists are working there. I cannot create a dump house in the vicinity of the atomic establishments. What should I do? I will be selecting a place somewhere here quite far away and I will dump the entire thing over here. Now, this statement has become arbitrary statement. So, I use the word quite far away. As a technologist, I should give an answer to the society, what is this quite far away? What is the implication of this? Clear? First question. Second question would be, if I dump the waste over here, what is going to happen? And as you were rightly saying, what will be the impact of this dumping at this point today and after some time? So, after some time could be in few tens of years, hundreds of years and thousands of years. So, these are the issues you know which are bothering us and all these issues fall in the realm of environmental geomechanics. We have to answer a lot of what's, when's, where, how clear? So, we have more questions and less answers. Questions are getting added up in the list every day. Any situation you talk about, India has become atomic major, all of you know this. Suppose if I want to test a atomic bomb, nuclear bomb, where would I test it? I will go to the deserts and I will put it here and I will do a mock test. Well, you have done the test. Now, what happens after the test is over? What you have done to the nature? You have created lot of unwanted activity in the near vicinity of the soil. And if you do not take care of this, what is going to happen? In the next monsoons, when water starts infiltering, what will happen? Everything will become a part of the liquid phase, goes to the ground water and migrates everywhere. Look at the chain of events which you have done and you have created problems for yourself because as a nation you wanted to become atomic major, nobody asked to do that. 
but then there is a compulsion. So, the moment you did all that you have created three more offshoots of the problems further. Now, you have to tackle them. The second situation could have been I would have gone to the sea offshore and there I would have exploded the bombs, but then what would have happened? You are directly leaking out all the activity into the liquid phase which international agencies are not going to allow you to do, but there are nations like North Korea and all which are doing. Then you understand what is happening nowadays in geopolitics of the entire world, clear? So, this is another situation see I have created, somebody, somebody asked me a question, I want to test my weapons and the testing is going to happen in sediments, sands, clays and you are a geotechnologist. So, you are the guy who knows the best possible information about the sands and clays or the rocks. Now, you cannot say this is not my realm of activity and please do not come to me because by profession you are a geotechnologist you are supposed to deal with rocks, soils, groundwater. See, I have created an opening for you, I have created a profession for you, are you realizing this? But the question is how you are going to do it? What will happen if it is done? When tsunami came in Japan, what happened? Most of their atomic establishment got distracted, clear? And then you must have read the reports, what happened to the activity? The activity was washed on shore. So, most of their beaches are contaminated heavily with radioactivity. Who will clean it up? Who will clean it up? A physicist says this is not my job, my job was to create an atomic bomb and do some experiments to see how the you know, neutron and proton are sitting together and how much energy can be created out of the fusion of fission process. So, any type of muck which has been generated, any type of cleanup which is required comes in the domain of environmental engineering and because it is dealing with geomaterials, it falls in the domain of environmental geotechnologies. Is this okay? Challenges are several. Is this part clear? Some part of the introduction have you followed what we are dealing with and why? Now, it is another thing that we may not be able to give you all the answers today, but yes, for generations to come and with our efforts of decoding the information, creating more and more information, a day will come where the future generations will have been the answer that if you are doing this, this will be the impact, be careful or do it like this, create guidelines, okay. Any questions, any suggestions? Solution to that problem. So, the, my first answer to your question would be increase your capacity to handle the information. So, you know you handle like this, make a big bowl, so that the information when keeps on giving to you, you can hold it. So, right now what I am doing is I am just training you to hold the information. I will keep on adding more and more information, do not worry. You will be scared of the information which will be, yes, you, anything? Yes, anyone else, please? You should be eager, you should be curious, but at the same time you have to mature yourself slowly. In one day if you eat too much, what will happen? It will be aversion, constipation, lot of other diseases. So, eat slowly and digest it, that is very important, okay. So, if you do not have any suggestion further, so let me proceed. It is a, it's a new subject, so it will take time for you to, you know, sync the information which you are receiving. So, let us define our scope, I think this is what you are interested in. Truly speaking, scope is not well defined and scope is ever increasing. Every day you come across new problems, you know this. So, it is very difficult to define the scope of environmental geomechanics and 
scope of our activities, but still I have tried to put them in four, five major groups. The first one is I am sure you must have realized by now, the first thing is you have to handle the waste which is coming out of the modern day civilization. Why are you blaming industries? Even the households, the amount of waste which you are generating imagine, living standards have gone up, per capita income has gone up. The type of items which you are consuming are very different than what your parents and their parents were using. Now, lithium, nickel, lead batteries are so common and you are just throwing them in the dustbin which were not a situation maybe some time back. So, even household waste itself has become a very, very big issue. Forget about the industries, do not blame them much because industries take care of what they are doing. Households are not taking care of what they are doing despite our education also going up. So, there is a mismatch between the education and understanding that how much you are destroying the environment. So, the first thing is how should I dispose waste, how should I handle it, how should I store it. So, until now whatever I discuss if you remember the heap formation and all deals with these three situations. What type of waste is being generated, clear? How should I dispose it, how should I handle it, where should I store it? In my statement, I do not know whether you realize or not, I said if I do not want to store waste in my premises and if I was want to dump it somewhere, I have to take permission from the government, local governance and so on. This is the disposal part, where should I dispose? Industrialists have all the rights to ask the government that we are giving you something what you are giving us in return. It is the job of the government and the municipal corporation to give you a place for dumping the byproducts. Unfortunately, this is not happening and that is why the entire mess has been created because our cities are not the planned cities. Now, I think you can understand the whole situation. You are demanding something for which there is no answer with the corporation, administrators, politicians and so on. So, first question is what type of waste pollutants are being discharged from the industry? in the soils, on the soils, all those concepts are valid. Once you have understood this, 80 percent job is done. Until now what is happening? Nobody has characterized the waste. Nobody has understood what type of toxicity the system will have, whether I should bury it or I should leave it just on the surface of the ground. Some people might be throwing it in the sea, river bodies, ponds and so on because of lack of information, lack of education. So, most of the environmental geotechnologists are dealing with disposal, handling and storage and this is the dire need of the industry. Every industry comes to you asking a question, my product is this and my byproduct is this. They know what to do with the product, you need not to tell them because this is where they are getting the money. The question is what should be done with the byproduct, you have to give them an answer. So, the question which you are asking most of my learning has come from these type of situations where I was dealing with several pharmaceutical companies, several atomic waste and atomic establishments of the country, several power plants, several business houses, several oil industries which are producing oil without realizing how much is being wasted and where it is going and so on. So, you may get a reflection of my uh, of uh, reflection of my understanding of these situations when I speak sometimes and then from there you have to derive that how I did in get the information related to this subject. Unfortunately, because of the non-disclosure clauses associated with each and every project, things cannot be discussed in public domain, fine. So, I cannot say per se that where this type of situation occurred. But yes, this is the situation which I have dealt with. So, I am just telling you my uh, thoughts over it and whatever knowledge I have acquired from this type of a situation. So, your job is done, you get the answer to your questions, try to get that, okay. The second situation is in this figure we were talking about rains coming over and interacting with the entity or the 
you know heaps you are talking about this thing over here also you know what will happen. Now under these situations what will happen is that the matrix of contaminants from the saturated systems is going to leave this system and migrate into the subsurface. Now this is what is known as contaminant transport. There are several guys who are spending their lifetime understanding how contaminant transport occurs in porous media. Few years back contaminant transport was studied by only hydrogeologists and these guys never bothered about the porous system. Look at the funny part of it you know unless geotechnical engineers came in the picture and they started giving more and more weightage to the porous media, soils, rocks, fractured rocks, saturated soils, unsaturated soils uns and then you know intact rocks and so on. So the moment these type of words started coming in the market, the monopoly of hydrogeologists was persisting. So, this subject now has become predominantly uh, you know a subject where lot of inputs from geotechnical engineering are required because then you have to define the porous system. Most of the hydrogeologists have solved these problems based on mathematics ignoring the medium ignoring the medium through which the contaminants are migrating. So, we would like to understand how what is the process of pollutants migrating in the geomaterials which is known as contaminant transport. Now, I am sure this is not a good situation where the contaminants are migrating in the porous media or you want them to migrate. So, if you do not want to them to migrate what you like to do is you like to contain this process. So, containment becomes a very very big profession in environmental geomechanics. There are guys who are trying to contain the spread of contaminants. I gave you some examples about how to safeguard our aquifers against contaminants. Otherwise, what will happen? Close to the industrial units, the entire groundwater will be contaminated. Clear? So, there are a lot of people who are trying to work on containment systems. They are designing containment systems, they are implementing them in the field. But it may so happen that containment is not possible because it is a very expensive process and physics may defy it. Then what you have to do? You have to do remediation. So, these are the four steps in fact you know first thing is you try to understand what type of waste is being disposed, how to handle it, how to store it, where to store it. The moment you store it you cannot cover it with polythene sheets. These are big big humps, big big heaps. So, elements of the nature are going to create a situation interaction problem where the water migrates through it creates leachates and they migrate or air may blow the fine particles out of these heaps and contaminate the entire system. I want to get rid of this create containment schemes and if containment is not possible you do remediation everywhere remediation is required. There are about 350 sites in Maharashtra only declared by Supreme Court where the ground is heavily contaminated and nothing is being done by the government of India. Imagine overall the country I do not know what are the correct numbers. And not only in India everywhere in the world where mining operations are going on, blasting is going on, dredging is going on, municipal solid waste are being stacked okay and for that matter any industrial activity is going on. You know this problem is across the borders and this problem does not recognize differentiation between human beings. This is a universal problem. Another interesting concept which is falling in this domain is we call it as 3 R's. I am sure you must have studied in your undergraduate most of you. So, we talk as you know how to recover something precious materials out of it, how to recycle the waste, how to reuse the waste. There is one R which is missing here which is now becoming more and more contaminated. do not give the answer <laughs> let them think over yes which R is missing 
very good excellent full marks. So, reduce is missing here which is becoming very very important. Now, unfortunately reduce is something which does not fall in our activity directly. So, for an example suppose there are several type of coals which have been taken out of the mines and if I ask you a question you give me a technology where the ash formation is not much. That means, once I incinerate it in the industrial units the ash amount is reduced. Now, this becomes a chemical process. So, is there any other way to reduce the amount of waste which is being generated by municipalities and by the industries? Any idea comes to your mind? Where the reduction of the waste can be done? So, truly speaking reduction of the waste can be done if you follow these 3 R's. If I can recover most of the resources out of the waste very good, if I can recycle it very good and if I can reuse is excellent. So, contemporary geomechanics deals with the situation where the reduction of the waste is not possible we understand, but try to reuse the entire thing. So, there is a group of people which is working on landfill residues and treating it as a man made resource. You created the landfill and in landfill something chemical, physical, biological process went on. Whatever is reduced over there or whatever is lying over there becomes a man made resource. Can I use it for different applications? Sustainability. It is very thought provoking. So, Arif is working in this concept. Arif, my student. So, we are trying to look into MSW itself as a man made resource because there is a need of the hour. You are, you are finding everywhere, you know, millions of tons of the waste is being piled up. So, as if I have got a mine of the natural materials and I can use this material for different applications. This is the bottom line, fine. Right? One example different type of industrial byproducts like say your glass furnace slags, slags of different types, ashes of different types, silica fumes of different types, can they be used in a synergetic manner in infrastructure development? It is a big need of the hour. For me this is a man made resource. I need not to do more mining to create bricks out of the soil, it is banned now. But what I can do is I can use these industrial byproducts to create an entity which becomes a building block. So, are you realizing the shift? Whatever was thrown unidentified, unrecognized by our forefathers is becoming a resource for us, keeping in view sustainability issues. How much the scope of the studies has gone up now? Can you imagine? The environmental geomechanics deals directly with the sustainability. If you are very eager to understand what this means, read the papers which were written by my student Pratyusha, JVP Pratyusha, where we have shown that how these materials which are lying unattended have become man made resource and what we should do with them. Okay. So, in short these are the 5 activities with which we are on which we are focusing I would say. In real life the practice should be bottom down approach. So, you should start from bottom go up to the top. So, that first you try to reuse, recycle, reduce, recover most of it, then try to remediate, then try to contain. Uh, contain then try to understand whether something is going into the environment or not and then try to develop a strategy by which you can handle restore the waste. Are you realizing the philosophy behind the whole practice? Is this part okay? So, let us take few situations quickly. I am sure it must be very clear to all of you now. I am talking about a landfill 
where the municipal solid waste industrial byproducts have been stored and these landfills are sitting on the top of the ground levels on the ground level. It is a stationary water table and then what happens is precipitation occurs and because of precipitation we call this term as waste environment interaction. You know, it is a very latest concept where everybody is trying to understand how a material interacts with the environment. Interaction problem, contact mechanics which you have done in your classical geomechanics. Then as a result of this leachates will come out. What are leachates? Leachates are the matrix of the waste which can easily migrate out of it because of flowing water. or because of decomposition process, the gases which are coming out of the landfills are also a leachate in the gaseous form. The liquid phase of the leachate could be having gaseous phase associated with it. So, ultimately what happens? This type of situation gets created if you have a standing water table, stationary water table, fine. So, imagine you have a industry, you have a landfill where this type of situation gets created. Is this good for you? What is your first reaction? And you have somewhere here tube well to take out water and supply to your industry. What type of situation you have created? Is it advisable to have this type of situation? Then let us evaluate the second in situation. We were talking about containment. I will do the complete sheet piling. I will isolate the entire system from the surrounding area because any pollution control agency will tell you your waste should not spill out from your premises. The mesonomer is until now people used to think that the waste should not come out only on the surface, but truly speaking, the waste which is spreading into the subsurface should also not come out of your premises. So, go for a containment or a barrier scheme. Think of creating the complete cordoning off of the area. Our sheet pile knowledge says that yes, it can be done. The second situation is like this where there is a moving water table, flowing water table. So, whatever waste is being generated, whatever plumes are being generated they get migrated from one point to another point. I always give a logic that this situation is similar to the one if you rotate it by 180 degree it becomes a stack through which the air plume is coming out into the atmosphere. Your typical example which you normally do in your air pollution modeling. What do we want to do? We want to see what is the spread of this whole thing. You know when we say spread, extend, time, distance, intensity, concentration. You remember my this part which we are discussing, where should I dump? At what distance, at what depth? And when I am asking these questions, the message is inbuilt. I want to cut off this entire system from the populace. I want to isolate the entire thing so that nobody gets affected. So, we talk about what is the extent of spread in terms of time x, y, z, up to what distance this extent will be uh, felt, what is the intensity, what is the concentration and so on. And this is where we have to do modeling. So, either you go to the site and start drilling out holes and take out the samples of water, soil, rock and see whether they are contaminated or not very extreme, extremely expensive difficult task. Then what you can do is you can do mathematical modeling to predict how transport and fate of contaminants in geo environment is taking place and then validate your software codes. But the biggest question is for running softwares you require material property, from where you will bring the material property unless you do laboratory experiments or field experiments. 
So, if you are doing field experiments it is going to be very expensive, random you do not know up to what, what is the extent of the spread of the plumes from where I should take a sample first of all. So, the simplest answer is create this type of situation in the laboratory and then try to study the response of the material. This is part okay. Under all circumstances you need the material samples and you want to understand how these samples are going to behave under different environmental forces. So, there you can do experiments either in field or in the lab or do mathematical modeling. Now, answer my question which situation is better this situation or the previous one which I had shown you which one you like. Previous is like a volcano you know you are sitting on a volcano it may erupt any time. And the next one here things are flowing they go to your neighbor's place the neighbor is going to file a court case against you tomorrow and he will make sure that your industry gets closed. You know this so life is not easy they are not so simple answers to any situations. So, what scientists do and technologists do? Hmm? How would you find the solution? Study it, yes. What is studying? Investigate. What is that you are going to investigate? How it is responding to the system? What is happening? Which direction the flow of water is? Hydrodynamics, followed by geohydrology in a porous media how water is flowing in which direction. So, it may so happen that my neighbor's industry is not directly coming into the plume. I am saved. I can channelize the entire thing underground in such a way that the whole plume gets bifurcated or maybe gets channelized and I may dump it somewhere like sewer line hypothetical situation. So, under all situations you have to study this and then the whole thing becomes very very complicated. So, what I am going to do is I am going to share my knowledge whatever I have learnt in the due course of time with all of you how these type of problems are solved. Now, some of you are talking about factor of safety and all so I thought that let me include this slide. So, when you do all these type of exercise you know there are few things which are becoming very very important. The first is you have to develop a theory. Theory is sort of a real life situation which is what is known as model making. I showed you two models just now there is a landfill everything is coming out and then there is a spread either stack or spread it is a model. Then I was emphasizing on laboratory tests field test. So, go to the field collect samples or do some in situ ex examinations generate data. Once you have data using this data you can generate empirical relationships. Now, empirical relationships are nothing but validation of the theories which you are developing. When your data and theories are quantified you can have computer applications algorithms database you can develop this is the role of information technology firm. What is factor of safety? Factor of safety is nothing but the discrepancy between knowledge experience and the judgment. So, I know that 32 degree of the friction angle is not a reasonable shear strength parameter for this material. I will say reduce it by half this is factor of safety. From where I got this confidence to say reduce it by half either this is experience or it is my judgment or I might have done laboratory experiments and I might have forced the material to fail fail at 50 percent of the shear strength. So, these type of things keep going when you do this type of analysis fine and the system gets studied with reliability uncertainties. So, this is where the reliability uncertainties come into the picture because the moment you talk about factor of safety the material property these are all how reliable these terms are. So, I will stop here today what I have done in the previous few lectures is first of all I have tried to introduce 
what this subject is all about clear and now I have created a situation where you must have realized the importance of dealing with these type of situations and you must have also realized that there are lot of question marks which are coming out of the entire thing there is no answer as such. So, most of the question marks are how we will do this whether it has been done who will do this when he or she will do this what will happen with this clear all these what's why where's are there. So, as I said it is very difficult to answer all the questions because this subject is growing my knowledge is growing there are many things which are not, not known to me yet, but we are trying to work on it. So, this has become a continuous process, but in the process whatever we have learnt I do not mind sharing it with you guys. What I expect from you people is that you should be clever enough to pick up this concepts and move ahead. Fortunately for you the information is available in literature form if not in the book form and that information is very contemporary. Sometime back civil engineering students used to say that whatever is being taught in the class is extremely obsolete and boring, but fortunately the situation is like this that whatever is being taught in the class is extremely contemporary and challenging. And this is where I say the whole concept of civil engineering has got changed. A subject which used to be very, very mundane, empirical, most of the equations you were mugging without realizing what you are doing. This scenario has disappeared suddenly. There are more and more challenges and the problems which are being coined at you, thrown at you by the industries, administrators, societies, municipal bodies and they are all expecting that you should be able to give an answer. Why? Because they say that you are the expert, you are dealing with this whole thing which others cannot do. So, this is where we are, how it sounds good or bad. The facts are this, I hope I have made clear. So, what is your feeling? What I am going to share and what I have shared until now with you is to show you where you can fit in in today's profession as a geotechnologist. What do you say? Uh, as you said, uh, there are more questions uh, and answers are less. So, I think we will get the knowledge uh, by those answers maybe later on. Yes. Next, I think uh, there is a lot of research to do, and uh, there are, uh, as you said, there are a lot of questions. So uh, we require solution. So uh, it's kind of uh, you know uh, research-based uh, syllabus uh, course. Uh, so there are there is lot to do. Right? Sir, I think uh, the situation has changed. The soil mechanics is no, not no more classical anymore. Uh, uh, the things have changed. The pore water behavior has changed, and uh, the flow of water, which we earlier we considered is only due to head difference, the situation has changed. The properties of pore water also has changed. So the entire thing is changing. So we have to <coughs> cope up with it, and new what venues to be opened. I am happy to hear that the things are changing at least you can capture this yes. I think there are a lot of opportunity and challenges in this uh, course uh, or in this area. Uh, we have to study a lot of things and we cannot say no to people that we do not know. We have to study that things and uh, work to grow our society and country. Mm. I think it is good as well as uh, situations are uh, growing bad, but uh, it induces more and more challenges and hence it gives opportunities and becomes more interesting. Yes, something like 
what is civilization? You know, yesterday's Times of India, if you read IIT report says, what was on the center page? It was for the first page, center heading. Very good. Yeah, so what, what, what they are writing? Digitization has created more and more cyber crime. Bring it to your profession immediately. Whenever you read all these things, it should come to your mind that oh, I am also doing the same thing. So, industrialization has led to yes. So, their digitization has created more and more cyber crimes. Here, what is happening? The more and more industrialization has created all this type of chaos. You are getting the point? Yes. Or yeah, you can start. Sir, after exploring this subject, I think we can address the issues of geo environment, the geo environmental issues. And as geo environmentalists, we can, I think we need solutions to it. And I think uh, there, there is a lot of scope for us because this is an entirely new subject. So I think we have a lot of research to do. Okay. Uh, according to me, the world is coming up with new so, uh, new problems and uh, situations, and every situation is a challenge in itself. So we, as a geo environmentalist, we need to come in the picture to uh, propose to first study the problem, then propose some uh, solutions, and then. Continue. Good. Yes. And they all said we need to first. Study. Say something different then. We should say something different, okay. which nobody has said yet. Uh, we need to be patient, patient about uh, what have we got, uh, because this is an entirely new. Subject. We were very patient, by the way. That is why this situation has arrived. No, because <laughs> we have been very patient. We don't have no, no, no. I think to many, many things. So yes. patient about what we have got and curious about how can we solve the problems. Yeah, sometimes what you should do is you should zoom out the map of India and start scanning from one side of the map, one, one corner of the country and come back to the other corner making a complete cycle and just keep on zooming in and see what is happening on the surface of the earth as far as India is concerned for that matter any nation and there you will realize you know why I am asking you to do this. So, whenever you get time, free time, please sit down, go to the industrial belt of the country, zoom it up and see what type of features have got created. The Himalayas have got shifted, you know, from Himalaya range and they are sitting now in Chhattisgarh. At the same time, the craters have been shifted from some other place and they have been created in Nagpur, huge crater craters. So, this is all man made activity you know. Nature gave you mountains somewhere, but you created a mountain in the middle of the Delhi city, Okla. You created a big landfill there, Ganjur Mark, the huge mountains now and by the time you pass out next year to next year, you will see the height is going to increase further and further. This is very interesting to observe. Are you realizing? So, the whole system has become a very dynamic system. Realize more and more, read newspapers, watch TV news and learn yourself what is happening. But if you really want to understand what is happening, then you have to intervene, you have to stop me. Another thing is not like you know there is a curriculum which has to be completed or something to be taught, there is nothing of this sort here. So, what I will appreciate is that if you can build a case. Now you were asking this question, why do not you create a case out of it? So, when I am discussing something, you create a case and say, how did you solve this problem? So, this is where I will get you know new ideas and maybe a creative question from you for which I might have to think a bit before answering. Got the point? Thank you. Sir.